We got Randy Brown back here on the program. A little bit more uh, set up and, and a little bit more of a presentation here today than normal. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. But he's going to be taking on Vicente Luque at UFC Fight Night on August 1st. Randy, how's it going, man? It's going good, bro. It's been good. How's everything with you? It's going great, but we got to talk about the setup here. I mean, obviously, you're really into the streaming and stuff now. Uh, when was this built? When was this put together? Because it looks awesome. I was, I was kind of gushing off air, uh, for those <laughs> who don't know. Um. I, well, this is a new setup. I've, I started streaming maybe about... I've been streaming, but I never really took the time to put it all together and do it properly, I'd say. So I recently started locking in on it once the quarantine happened and you know I had some free time. I decided to really just go hard with it. I'm playing video games every day anyway, so why not? Yeah, no, it's a smart idea, and good to see a lot of fighters are sort of, uh, you know, making that decision to, you know, expand their horizons, and, you know, like you said, you're going to play games anyways, you might as well uh, get an audience for it and, and make a bit of cash too, which is uh, which is always good. Uh, let's start with this fight though, man, you must be so thrilled to get it rebooked, there's a lot of fights that were booked beforehand, before COVID, that didn't get rebooked, they got new opponents, how excited were you to, to get Luque as an opponent? I was really excited, man, uh, honestly, I didn't think that he would take the fight again you know it didn't make any sense for him to take the fight again and and hats off to him and i appreciate it you know yeah no it's uh, gonna be a great fight uh, how have things changed since the last time we talked because i know with covid things were a little bit more restrictive have th- things opened up a little bit more or is it still pretty restricted it's 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 opening up we're entering in phase three now over here in new york um same shit though you know gyms aren't open yet so we're working we're trying to put it together do what we can do you know, it's not a lot of shit we can do, but we're doing as much as we can and we're getting the guys together and we have small groups. We're doing it in small groups, but it's a lot different than what it normally is. I'll tell you that it's a lot different and it's a lot harder, but we're making it happen. Now, is this at like someone's house or do you guys go like do you go to the gym when there's no one there? Or how, how does that work? I guess you um, can't say too much. The government might be watching. You might have uh, <laughs> someone come in and break down the door and be, you know, throw a mask nah, at you or nah, something. Not even all that. Not all that. But um, we're, we're, we're in my backyard most of the time. My coach comes and come to the backyard. We put some work in back there. You know, some of the guys come visit me, you know, at my house and we just work in the back, man. Uh, occasionally we go to the gym. You know, we sneak in there from time to time, do what we got to do. Um. It all depends on the timing of the guys and who can make it and at what time. And, yeah, we, we just – where does the world is a way, man? We're, we're making it happen. Uh, this has got Fight of the Night written all over it, you and Luke. Uh, I just – you know, I can't wait to just see how the styles clash together. How, how, do, you, how do you look at this fight from, from, from your perspective, uh, though? Because I know it's one thing for, you know, me and, and everyone else to kind of look at it. But how do you look at the fight? I know, James. You, you didn't think I had the juice, James. Oh, I don't know. The, the, the tweet, the tweet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, that's the juice, bro. <laughs> Come on. That, but the, hold on. Let, let's get a little bit of context here, okay? Because of, because of the whole thing here. So, what you're referring to was because of the Jeff Neal interview I did, right? Because it seemed like Jeff was going to fight Vicente, and I was talking about that, and and it was it was more about Jeff getting him a fight than it was disrespecting I, so, you. It's cool. Jeff could get a fight too, but what about me? I can't. I, you, you can't. I, you I can't. Was but who's, deserving who's, of a who? fight against Jeff Neal? Against uh, the uh, against, I mean, uh, well, Vicente. Well, I think if you look in terms of the rankings and stuff, I think the Neil Neil, you know, he's he's been trying to get a fight there. Luke's ranked a little higher. I think it's I, offer, I actually offered the fight, Jeff Neil. Jeff Neil. Me and, and Jeff Neil have conversation through through Twitter, through uh I've texted him personally trying to get a fight with him. You know, me and him, we have conversation. And the thing is the thing is with Jeff Neil is that good guy, great guy, you know, um we have a great relationship, you know, uh the few times that we spoke. But um I wanted to fight him, but he wants to fight someone with a number, you know, and I, and I, I that's totally understandable. A lot of those guys are not looking to fight him. I'm one of those guys that's looking to fight. I'm looking to fight anybody, anytime, anywhere I can. You know what I mean? I'm down to scrap. So I don't know what happened beyond, behind the scenes with Vicente, but me and Vicente were scheduled to fight before, way before all of this. Way, I think way before even him and uh, before he fought uh, Mike Perry, we were scheduled to fight, you know, so. You know, it was only right that I, I after after uh, Vicente's fight, I spoke to, you know, I, I tweeted Vicente. I didn't speak to him. I tweeted him. He didn't answer, you know, but I think, you know, he's a warrior and he's a man of, of moral. And he decided, hey, you know what? We had some unfinished business and I think that we should we should finish it. So I, I think I deserve the fight. I think that I've been quietly putting it together. And I think that, you know, it's a good time for me to show out and show the world what I'm capable of, you know, and I think that's a great fight for me. Absolutely. And by the way, I like I like the honesty here. I do. I mean, we've been doing interviews for a while. I like you calling mm-hmm. me out on, on you know, the, the tweet and everything. But I did want to point out the context because the way you framed that at the beginning, it looked like I was saying you didn't have a chance or anything like that. I think yeah. anyone has a chance in this fight. But if you're looking at the rankings, Neil, in my opinion, he's he's had bigger wins than you do. That's just honest. For my sure. Honest opinion. For sure. For sure. For sure. And I 
and I totally agree. But, um, you know, I think styles make fights, and I think that me and Vicente make for a masterpiece, and I think it'll be a beautiful fight for everyone, you know, and I, I think the matchmakers are looking at it from that lens as well. And it's about time I, I get a chance to break into the top 15. You know, that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. No, this is this is good. I like this. Um, one thing I was going to ask you, I, I don't know if this will have an impact or not, but I'm sure you saw Gilbert Burns tested positive for COVID or he, he was obviously at the time of recording this. He's out of his fight tomorrow against uh, Kamaru Usman. Um, I know Vicente Luque trained with him as well. Is that something that's even that you've even thought of that he might test as well? I don't know. It's just something I was I have, thinking of. I have. We've actually been speaking about this on my Twitch. You know, I do the the show. I have a twi- I have a root view called the. I, I got to tune into one of these. I'm missing yeah, so check much it out. news. Check it out. We break down fights and we, you know, we talk about upcoming fights and keys to victory and all that shit. And it's something I've spoken about, you know, and it's it's been across my mind. And I I honestly hope that that's not the case, but the chances of that not being the case are pretty are pretty low. So, um. It happened so far out that I think he'll be able to recover and show up on, and show up to fight and everything will be all right. Training partners, who are you, who are you getting, getting to work with? You talked about, you know, doing the training in your, in your backyard and stuff. Who, who have been the training partners? Um, just a lot of stand-up guys, man. A lot of stand-up guys, a lot of hard-nosed guys that are coming forward, throwing big bombs. Uh, we got one guy, uh, Jonathan. I don't remember. I don't know his last name, but, you know, he's a boxer. You know, he's Jonathan a Jonathan the boxer. boxer. We'll just that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'll see him on my Instagram. Go follow him on my Instagram. I posted him. Me and him have been getting it in. A um, lot of stand-up work, you know. Also, I have this one dude. He's a, he's a wrestler. You know, he comes down and he, he gives me some wrestling work in the backyard. Um, it's tough, man. So it's a small group. It's a small group. And I have basically a wrestler, a kickboxer, and, and a boxer. We just, we just putting it in every day, you know. Do you ever see your brother at all, Andre Harrison? I saw Andre today. I actually trained with Andre today. Okay. Yeah, yeah he sent me a tweet today. It's, I guess he's looking for a fight because I guess he's not. Well, he's well. PFL's not even doing anything anymore anyway, so he couldn't go back and fight there right now because they're they're suspending everything. But he's got to get a fight, man. He's got a great record. I don't know why uh, UFC hasn't taken a look at him, but I I think they I think they have I think they have been looking at him, and I think that he I think he needs to just go out and just get another fight right now on a local scene or something and just, just and show that. Hey, I think still that would here. help him too. Get right. That finish. was always the thing before when he was with Titan was that he was winning these decisions. And I think the UFC was kind of like, ah, well, good record, but we don't want, you know, so yeah, he's excited though, man. He's excited. No, I, I, no, I, I totally agree. Fight. I'm just looking at it from their perspective though. Cause yeah, they, for sure, for they'll, sure. they'll look at a decision and they'll be like, ah, we're, we're not really, cause that's, that's what happened to Lance Palmer. That's why he ended up staying with world series of fighting. Lance is a, I think Lance is an exciting fighter too, but um, again, cause he, he didn't finish a lot of his opponents. They were kind of like, ah, well, you know, we're not really, you know, eager to sign you. So it's just one of I those agree. cases, but I agree. Yeah. So here, and then, plus I'm giving Andre props. He always talks smack at me. He says he's going to beat me up in street fighter. We haven't played Yo. yet. Whenever you're ready, man. I'm, talking. I'm coming. I'm good. coming. One of these Dude days. Dude is good. Whenever you're ready. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come down one of these days. We almost did it last year. You remember this? Because I was there for 244. Yeah, and yeah. I just I ran out of time. So I'll, uh, yeah, next time I'm in New York, for sure, I'll be uh, doing it up. Anyways, back to your fight. Um, we got a few weeks out from this fight. Uh, weight cut going well. How's everything going there? I'm going to send you a video after this. But the okay. weight cut's being good. The weight cut is good. The weight cut is good. I'm feeling strong. And... You know, I'm I'm solid right now. Everything feels good. The diet's on point. You know, we've been prepping for this fight for a long time. You know, we had a little break in between, but, you know, we picked up right where we left off. And things are good, man. Things are good. Diet's good. Weight's good. Everything's going to be on point. Fight come fight night. Uh, who's going to be in your corner? Same same cast and crew. Tyrone Credle. Um, sensei Nardu. You know, my sensei from Budokan Martial Arts. And uh, my manager, Matt Cully. How's this fight playing out on the first? Ah, I get my hand raised. Well, I mean, um, I mean you wouldn't have signed the contract otherwise, but you, you see, do you see it finished? Do you think it's going to be like a three-round um, war? How, how do you envision think, the fight playing out? My style, I don't want to sound arrogant on here and sound like I don't want to be that guy, you know, coming on here talking shit, but facts is facts, you know, and styles make fights, and my style doesn't allow for a war for, you know, for, I mean, it can happen. We can go to war. It is. I've been in wars in the gym. You know, I've yet to be in a war in in um in the octagon, but um, I don't look for wars. You know, I look for finishes. You know, I look for precise, you know, calculated type of uh type of you know performances. So I think that's what I'm gonna look to put on. I'm gonna look to go out there and display my skills and just and show y'all what I'm about, man. Because I'm tired of you and everyone else in the media, you know, underestimating me. I'm tired of people doubting me, but it, you know, we'll see. We'll show. I'm gonna show up and show out. This is like I mentioned the implications of this fight very big here. Luke, uh, you know, again, I think the only loss he's had recently was was to Wonderboy, who's ranked very high. Where does a win put you in the division, in your opinion? 
Um, it puts me right right above him, I think. He's ranked number 11. I think it should put me right into that, that number 10 spot. And it just sits me right there with the elite of the, the division, you know. And I think I start to get some better matchups from here on out, you know. Not say better matchups, but, you know, bigger name matchups. And, you know, and then we, we start to make that climb, man. Um, something we kind of talked about here, like, you know, we're kind of joking about the whole, uh, you know, the matchup coming together and all that stuff, but, but what's sort of your overall take on the media in general, like the coverage of the sport and stuff? Cause everyone has their, their, you know, sort of their mixed views on everything. I'm always curious to hear the fighter's perspective and, uh, you've been very honest with me today. So I'm curious to get your uh, honest thoughts on this. Um, for me, I don't mind the media. I don't mind the media. I actually embrace the media. Um, in the beginning of my career, I feel like I was very like wary of the media, you know, especially Ariel. You know, I was very wary of the media. Have you, so. have you done other than like Media Day? Did you ever do a show or no? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I've done a show, and I was very green at the time, so I've never, I never. I tried not to really because I don't want to get my words twisted. So now I had to like walk <laughs> right. on eggshells, you yeah. know. But now I don't give a fuck, you know. Now yeah. I don't give, you know. So more I'm kind of, I'm, and I'm older, and I've been in the sport longer now, and I'm more now I'm just more like whatever, you know. But um, I don't mind the media. I just, I just think a lot of times guys don't know. They don't have the facts and they don't know what they're looking at. They they just go off of, I don't want to say hype, but they go off of trend. They go off of what you know. One plus one equals two. You know, and this is this is mixed martial arts and this is combat. One plus one doesn't always equal two. You know, and um, and that's that's just what the media does. They can they have the ability to push someone. They have the ability to you know hype someone, which is you know that's that's what it is. You know, I'm not mad at it. That's just what it is. But a lot of times they don't get it right. And I don't expect them to get it right, but a lot of times they don't. But sometimes I, I would love for the media to look at something more objectively, and I, lo- I would love for them to look at things more, you know, from a combat lens more so than just the entertainment the lens. Of, yeah, I know. What you, you know, mean. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the entertainment lens exactly. I'd much rather them look at the, you know, I'll start to understand combat, you know, more and and do some more research and that kind of stuff because a lot of times. I was the underdog a lot of times where I should not have been the underdog. But again, I understood why I was the underdog, you know? Well, one thing I wanted to point out about that, I don't know if you're aware of this, I'm sure you are, but a lot of fighters, believe it or not, aren't. Like, when people look at betting odds, what I don't think what a lot of people realize is that, like, an odds maker sets the odds at a certain price, and then it's the public that actually, like, bets it one way or the other. So, like, sometimes uh, someone okay, will be okay. like, I can't believe I'm an underdog. Well, it's like, blame the public. They're the ones betting on it. It's not the odds Yeah, but odds the, public is, the, the public is influenced by who? That's true. The media, but then they're also influenced by like you know, like like trends, I guess too. Like with certain, like you said, I guess it kind of goes back to the media. I guess you're right there. So, yeah, kind of all ties in together. But but uh, again, this is entertainment, man. This is what it is, and I love it. I love it. It is what it is. It's up to you. I'm starting to learn that it's up to you. You have to take things into your own hands, and you have to create your own narrative. And um, that's what I'm learning to do, along along with knocking people the fuck out. You know, <laughs> along with that. You know, but. You have the ability to to create your own narrative and do what you need to do and take control of your destiny. And this is what I'm doing. And this is why I love this fight. No, I agree. Uh, Last question. Uh, We talked about video games there. What are you playing right now for those who haven't seen your your Twitch channel or anything? What's what's on deck these days? Right now I'm playing. I'm not playing, obviously, Warzone. Everyone's playing for Modern Warfare Warzone. I'm playing online. We got the squad. We're getting dubs left and right. So come to my Twitch, Touch and Go 170. Check it out telling you won't be disappointed we get nothing but dubs um but i'm playing need for speed heat oh, i love that game you know that game like yeah. originated uh so i live in vancouver you know like ea mm-hmm. sports the main studios in burnaby which is like near where like in like near vancouver so they're yeah. in the, one of the early need for speeds you can actually take like the drive up to whistler like they actually did that map oh, wow. so it was, like i was playing this as a kid being like holy crap i've done that drive before it's pretty cool so oh so you, it's the actual map of where yeah like live. like not the exact distance but obviously but like there's certain like marks that you would see when you when you do oh, that nice. drive because it's a couple hours from vancouver so Oh wow! I, that game though is phenomenal. Phenom- That's been around I, I since I was a kid, man. Game. Like seriously, like, and I'm 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 a lot older than you, but it's yeah. like it, it just shows you how good that franchise is. Yeah, man, they're doing well. They're doing. I mean, they had like a, some. They fell off a little bit, you know. And I kind of was like, ah, I played like one of them, and then it was like, ah, you know. They, but now this one called Heat, man. It, it I, I don't know when exactly it came out. I'm a little late to the party, but I'm telling you, it's fire. I've been streaming the shit out of it because I love that game. I've been playing a lot of that. Um. I also play a bunch of randoms. I play random shit. Like I'll play like Portal, 
you probably never heard of Pro Portal or nothing. You no, know, I'm like, not really up on the new games. I just got a Nintendo Switch like a month ago. That's how far <laughs> behind the, the ball I am. And I've been playing the Mario game. But I also played Streets of Rage 4. I used to play that as a kid. Have you seen that game at all? Have you played that? Oh, absolutely. They just came out with a new one. Yeah, that's the one I'm playing. Every, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's fire. It's fire. It's fire. Oh, it's so good. Bro, I'm actually, let me show you. I'm actually, oh, I'm in the process of building a PC right now. I'm okay. building like a, a monster PC. Yeah, let's see it here. Ah. If I, I had the time, I would totally do that because that—that's like a—that—that's the type of stuff I'm into is like building stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good time, man. I it's I I'm building. I don't know if you can see. This is a i9 core, you know, nine nine hundred K processor. I got a, a Maximus, a Rogue Maximus motherboard. I'm gonna put it in. I'm like I'm going hard, bro. I'm about to build this crazy gaming PC. It's this monster game with a with a RTX uh, 2080 Ti fucking graphics card just a just beast pimping of it a, out man yeah that's I yeah. Mean, those, those specs are, are amazing i'm actually like well, I, I i'm a pc guy i've always been a pc guy so i actually use a gaming laptop for editing yeah. because it's so much faster i use a razor it's Me amazing too. i got razor blade 15 that's what i'm i got the razor about, blade right? uh 15 as well it's uh 2017 so it's uh great 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 laptop i've got the touch screen and everything it's been uh it's been it literally saved me hours of time just with editing and exporting because it's so fast so there you yeah, go man. I, I, I would rec- I would recommend a gaming PC for anything. Anything that yeah. you're doing, go to gaming PC. Yeah, and that's thin too. Kind of that, that's a, lo- a lot of these gaming PCs, like they're like you know, like some of the brands, like they're 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 heavy, right? This one's like a thin. It's like the size of a Mac, but it the processing yeah. speed's amazing. The only downside is the fan is so loud, but I'll take that. That's that's not a big deal. Really? My, yeah. I mean, I just got mine for the t- uh, 2020. They reduced the sound noise. It's just it's absolutely perfect. I can't even hear this. But this, oh, the man. fan. Now you're, now you're going to make me want to buy a new one. That's, <laughs> that's, that, that's how good they are. All right. We probably lost half of our audience uh, just be with the, uh, the the tech talk, but we'll definitely talk some more le- next time. Uh, it's coming up here uh, August 1st. It is UFC fight night. Randy, this is a lot of fun, man. Honestly, I do appreciate the honesty and everything. I love hearing from you. I know, um, I know. Just, uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media, where they can check out your Twitch channel and any thank yous and things like that. The floor is yours. Um, you can check me out on Instagram, touch and go underscore. That's touch letter N G O underscore. Uh, you can same thing for Twitter. Uh, if you want to come to my Twitch, we got a, we have a lot of fun. Join my Twitch and I'll get you in a discord and get you up on everything first. Um, my Twitch is touch and go one seven zero. And yeah, just come through, come chill with me, chop it up. And don't forget my YouTube. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm doing blogs called the real rude. You get a behind the scenes look as what it's like for me to prepare you know, for a UFC fight during COVID and, uh, yeah, see what my training is like, you know, my family life, all that shit. Yeah. So come through, show some love. That's it. 